Phillies are here. They've won six in a row. Dodgers trying to slow them down. Coming off winning two of three to finish off the road trip. Took two of three from San Francisco after dropping the opener of that set and trying to build momentum out of this homestand. Three with the Phillies and three with the Giants. And we say welcome inside. So glad that you're with us tonight. Joe Davis with Earl Hershiser, Alana Rizzo, and Nomar Garcia Parra join us in just a moment. And it is good to be back home, isn't it? It's fantastic. You know, you're going to win a championship. You're going to win it at home. You're going to try and play 500 on the road. The Dodgers aren't quite there yet, but they are above 500 here. They're playing 600, and they'd like to strengthen that record here at home. Jared Eikhoff goes for the Phillies. It'll be Kenta Maeda for the Dodgers. And more on him. Here's Alana. Well, Joe and Oral, the uh, one and two record and 8.05 earned run average are the numeric proof that Kenta Maeda has struggled this season. But Dave Roberts knows it's not because of a lack of effort. When I asked him earlier today what he wanted to see and what he needed to see from Kenta Maeda, he said, I want him to go out there and I want him to compete. He wants to have that fastball command. He also wants him to have conviction in that fastball as well as his secondary stuff, guys. All right, Alana, we mentioned Nomar is in the building. Nomar, where exactly are you tonight? Well, I am in the low level and I don't know if fans know this we talk about there's great seats everywhere at Dodger Stadium but there is a party box level on the loge level spread out throughout this area that's where I am I'm gonna have a party up here listen my friends are stuck in traffic they're on their way right now that's why it's empty but at the same time you know this is a great view there's so many things you can do you can come out here with friends and family a group I talked about the left field pavilion last time I was out there brought back childhood memories this party's area is gonna bring me back to my college days I think Hopefully it fills up for you, Nomar. Hopefully a college days aren't empty dorm room that you're talking about. Dodgers and Phillies in a weekend series with the first pitch coming up in just a moment.
Bellinger taking the field for his Dodgers stadium debut tonight after his major league debut this week in San Francisco. He starts in left for the Dodgers as they open a three game series with the Philadelphia Phillies. And the Phillies lineup in this opener is brought to you by Honda. The Phillies offense last year was dead last in the majors and runs but much better on this young season. Cesar Hernandez leads it off then Freddie Galvis. Odubel Herrera hits third followed by Michael Franco. The former Blue Jay Michael Saunders out of the five spot then Aaron Altair. Tommy Joseph and Cameron Rupp in front of the pitcher Jared Eikhoff. So you know the story for Kenta Maeda so far it's not been a good one 17 runs in 19 innings so far that included allowing a career high four home runs his last time out and he's admitted Earl that his confidence right now has a little bit shaken. You know what he has confidence in throwing strikes but it's when he has the ball in the strike zone that's been the problem that's where he's really gotten hammered and especially with the fastball so it's a difference between having control which is throwing strikes and command which is commanding the ball down in the strike zone and getting ahead of hitters in a place where they don't really can't hit it very well and so he needs to get the ball hit on the ground a little bit more. When he had issues last year it was largely not relying on the fastball enough. Now he's being a little bit too reliant on it. And as he's trying to throw it a little bit harder, the command suffering and those seven home runs that he's given up through four starts. Cesar Hernandez climbs in to get this series started. Maeda threw his wind up. And off we go in game one with ball one. The Phillies have won six in a row after a five and nine start. Haven't won seven straight in five years. Here's a 1 0. And it's lined to right, but Kike Hernandez starting there for only the fourth time in his career. The LCL Queen getting his first day off. Has it for the first out. Shortstop, number 13, Freddie Galvez. Freddie Galvis now. Dodgers have won two of three after the one and three start to the road trip. Dropping two of three at Arizona, then losing the opener against San Francisco. Big bounce back win for them last night. 5 1 in extra innings after a heartbreaking extra innings loss the day before. First one to Galvis is in there for a strike. You know, the wind was really blowing here during batting practice, and it is still. Blown. We thought maybe when the sun starts to head down that it would calm down, but we are having one of those nights, maybe three or four a year here at Dodger Stadium, where they really blow. It's one and one, and it's going to carry to right field. Ball will get knocked down to left and to center, but in right field, especially down the line, you can take a ride on it. A breaking ball is swung on and miss and it's one and two. It's going to affect pick selection too from Maeda. I'll tell you you know when he throws that curveball right there he didn't all of a sudden want to throw it for a strike. As Monty set up away because you don't want the ball hit to right in the air. Calls for an off speed on one two here it comes and it's spiked in there two and two. Well, Maeda has faced the Phillies twice both last year in his rookie season beat them both times and route to finishing third in the National League Rookie of the Year race behind Corey Seager and Trey Turner. This is definitely a different Phillies team and it's starting to mature a little bit at their experience last year. You think of a young aggressive team you think of somebody that attacks and these guys see the most pitches of anybody in the big leagues almost four pitches per at bat. They were 27th in the big leagues last year. We see an old familiar face there Howie Kendrick. I ate it to Galvis with another 2 2 and a ground ball. Fair at first for Adrian Gonzalez in the second out. Now the Phillies a year ago 
started the season similarly went 22 and 15 to begin had the third best record in the National League but from there had the worst record in baseball as that young team wore down had starting pitching health issues and what was Pete McCannon's first season as the skipper at least the first full season took over in an interim role in 2015 when Ryan Sandberg was let go Two gone for Odubel Herrera it was their lone all star a year ago earned himself an extension this offseason he's only 25 but they have him signed now through the 2021 campaign breaking ball is in strike one Here's an 0 1. Hit off of the handle to second. Chase Utley's got it. And a 1 2 3 first inning for Kenta Maeda. Dodgers come to bat for the first time in this homestand against Jared Eikhoff when you come back. righties but I was just curious uh, all right thanks <laughs> yeah. what makes me laugh is um, just being around funny people <laughs> one of the windiest nights of the year here in Los Angeles Dodgers and Phillies meeting up to open this three game series and the Dodgers starting lineup is brought to you by Honda Andrew Tolls leads it off then it's Seager and Turner who are both hot Gonzalez hits clean up. Grandal catches and bats fifth. Chase Utley sliding up the lineup a touch to hit sixth in front of Bellinger, Hernandez, and Maeda. Jared Eikhoff, the Phillies starter for this one. His first 45 career starts were only has a 336 earned run average. And the only reason I heap those numbers at you is to tell you that the last guy to do it before him, Noah Syndergaard. An awful lot of potential on the mound. The young man knows how to pitch. Really has a superior out pitch. His curveball is very, very good. Tolls leading off against him. And quickly behind 0 2. Eikhoff's curveball is one of those ones that really is sharp late. And he's dealing with the wind here today. If it's like that on the mound, that'll actually enhance it into lefties and away to righties. It's interesting when it's windy you always talk about how it's going to affect fly balls but it can affect you on the mound too with your pitch selection. That one curves so much it almost hits tolls. Something right there. I mean he might not be used to it. He's been throwing the curveball in the bullpen. Maybe he threw a few here in warm ups but with the adrenaline and all of a sudden the first one in the game it is definitely going to help the ball bend right to left. And in the bullpen that's completely blocked off from the wind so he wouldn't feel the effects. Throws it again down the middle this time for strike three. 
One gone in the first. Here's Corey Seager. Here's we look at the Land ball. Rover performance Corey. spotlight. Corey Seager is aggressive. He's aggressive this year. The statistics you're looking at are from last year on the first pitch. He had five home runs last year on the first pitch. Had the third most at bats where the ball was put in play on the very first pitch last year. One of the most aggressive hitters in the big league. And he waits for strikes, though. It's not just about hacking. It's about getting a pitch he likes. Homered in back-to-back -back games. Takes ball one here. He has a hit in five consecutive games. There are the stats from last year. Altuve, Robinson Cano, and then Corey Seager. Some pretty good company. It's outside. It's 2-0. and Yeah, I think anytime you're looking at a you're gonna have a unique stat category like that one, it's important to look at the other guys that are up near the top of the category. And when they're Jose Altuve and Robinson Cano and Corey Seager, you know, it's probably a pretty good indication of a good player. Two and one. There was a good player up there in the party box right now that loved to attack the first pitch. <laughs> it's often a misconception. People think, oh, they're too aggressive. They're not patient. It's really about being ready once you step in the box and looking for your spot. And I think for Corey Seager, when he gets in there, he is looking particular an area. So let's say it's either the middle or if it's away, whatever his plan is in that particular at bat. And if you throw it there, whether it's a fastball or a breaking ball, he's ready to attack it, not let it go. Sitting pretty here, waiting on a 3-1 pitch. And cutting through it, 3-2. and two. Could be a very interesting night again for the offense. We came from San Francisco where it was hard to score runs. If the ball is not hit down the right field line, this could be a low scoring game. To left, into the teeth of the wind. Altair is there, and that ball on just about any other night sails right into the pavilion, or at least into the corner there for a home run. And Corey didn't slice that ball. It had a lot of backspin. It was smoked. He hits a lot of hard balls to left field. He really hits a lot of hard balls all over the field. And that was not deflected. He knows it, but he also knows about that win tonight. Two out in the first, and Justin Turner. Riding the longest hitting streak in the majors, not just active, but period this year. And extending it to 14 on the first pitch that he sees from Eikhoff. I tell you, when you're in a hit streak, you know it because people are asking you about it before the game, after the game, and sometimes it's in your head, but you're going, if I can get out of the way, especially in that first at bat, you feel so much better. Now you don't even have to stress about it, but Justin Turner getting on top of that ball beautifully, driving it up the middle. To keep this first inning going for Adrian Gonzalez. Like off from the stretch for the first time comes home and Gonzalez looks at strike one. Adrian walked yesterday during the 10th inning rally. Ross Stripling pinch ran for him and scored the go ahead run. On the 0 1. That wraps around the plate one ball and one strike. Did you see Ross's quotes after the game. They asked him about him running and he said hey. I'm probably faster than you think I am. I'd say on a 10 scale, I'm a six and a half. <laughs> oh, that's really proud. He's <laughs> a high school receiver, Stripling was. I didn't say if he was a burner, if he was a possession guy. And he did the button hook. <laughs> right. <laughs> the 1 1. Caught in the foul tip, 1 and 2. Adrian doesn't always get full days off even when Dave Roberts tries to get him off his feet to give his arm a little rest give his legs a little rest uh, with a four man bench and a seven man bullpen usually end up using all your parts. Eikhoff lets the one two fly and it's right down the middle on a breaking ball for strike three gets Gonzalez the same way he got tolls to start the inning that's with a curve looking.
The second inning, no score. Game one, Dodgers and Phillies. Dodgers and Giants face off in the back end of this homestand, Monday through Wednesday. Kershaw against Cueto will open that series on Monday, and the series will finish with Vin Scully night. Maeda worked the one, two, three first inning, and now gets Michael Franco to open the second. They're hoping for a bounce back year from this young right handed hitter. Had a breakout season in 2015 and was rookie in the rookie of the year discussion for a while before an injury. Then last year, pretty disappointing. Maeda's first pitch of the second is banged to first, but Adrian's got it. With the overshift on the right-handed hitter, you don't see that nearly as often as you do the left-handed hitter. Hit it right at the lone man on the right side. Let's take a look at the Volkswagen slow-mo cam, and I'll tell you what, this is in slow motion, but it makes Kenta Maeda feel really good. On a scale of 1 to 10, Adrian's ups are about a 3. <laughs> That's the Ross Stripling sprinting scale. Yeah, but Kenta Maeda has given up the line drive to right and that line drive to Adrian, and that can impact your confidence. You don't feel good about the way the ball is being hit, but it gives you confidence to just get in the strike zone, let your defense work. Michael Saunders taking a strike. <laughs> Key pitch right there, that slow curve ball to get people off his fastball later in the count. He doesn't throw it to strike people out, but he does throw it to steal strikes. And it's one less pitch that they get information on as far as his fastball. One and one. And we were talking about the Phillies being so young last year. They were the youngest team in baseball. They're still one of the youngest, but guys like Michael Saunders have been added to the equation. More veteran players on one year deals. Rounded foul and it's one and two and that's by design. They're still rebuilding. They don't necessarily look at this as a year where they're going to break through. Howie Kendrick one of those guys. Clay Buchholz they signed. He's injured right now but there's several guys on the roster they look at in these one year deals potentially being trade candidates if they perform well to help flip for more prospects to help in their rebuild. Maeda pitches one two. And it's line foul. In some ways it's like an extended spring training where those veterans get to play and they go to spring and they can accumulate their numbers and get ready for the future of their career. But as far as the organization they know there's not any long term plans for them. But you don't want to put out all kids out there you can actually ruin their confidence and these veterans teach them how to win. Teach two and two. Them, teach them the process. Nomar did that with a lot of young kids here when he was a Dodger. They brought Nomar over as a, a veteran to kind of school a lot of the young guys, the Ethiers and the Kemps and that generation. Full count, Nomar. A, a, you always remember the veterans that actually took you, either took you under your wing or also just helped you throughout your career. Because it went, like you said, if you're surrounded by all young guys, you guys are learning kind of together. But when you actually have a young guy or an older guy who has the experience and you can go to them, and when a certain situation pops up that you didn't experience down in the minors, it's really important to be able to pick their brain. Base is empty with one gone in the second. Maeda to Saunders with a payoff, and he's got his first punch out of the game. <laughs> Little cutter down and under his swing and really good location. You don't want to leave this on the plate with the way the wind's blowing. You got to get it down, hope it's hit on the ground, or you got to get it in to make sure it's pulled foul. You got him to miss. Five up and five down for him now, and it's here and all tear to the plate in a scoreless second inning. Altair taking advantage of Howie Kendrick's injury. Fastball rides over the inside half at 94, strike one. Kendrick was the starting left fielder on opening day, but he's out with an oblique injury and figures to be out until mid May. Altair's taking advantage, though, at an eight game hitting streak prior to going 0 for 1 yesterday. Outside, 1 and 1. That one missed by a lot. That shows a little bit of lack of commitment to a fastball into a righty right there. Osmani was setting in on the edge and threw it in the left hand batter's box. Mm -hmm. 
On one one comes back with a pitch that's lifted in foul ground. If there's ever a night though when you're struggling to pitch inside against right handed pitching wouldn't tonight be the night to just forget about it and start pounding in there with the way the wind's blowing. I would love to pitch inside tonight to the righties for sure. You'd want to get in on their handle and you wouldn't want to live away and let them drive the ball to right field and feel comfortable kind of diving out there. And I think that's one of the problems for Kenta because as a hitter I know I can give up the inside because he's not he's afraid to go in there. So I can actually lean over the plate and take advantage of his off speed. And Maeda with a strikeout of Altair. Back to back K's to finish the second. Six up and six down for Kenta. Dodger half of the second inning. We take a look at our Coors Light cold hard facts. He has been really good against the Phillies. Among guys with at least 75 plate appearances, is the number one OPS against Philadelphia in his career. 18 games, and he's hit seven home runs against the Phillies. Waits on the first one from Jared Eikhoff and watches it catch the outside corner for a strike. Now the 0-1. That's up ball one. With what you showed about Yasmani there and the power that he's had against the Phillies, that's not a good equation for the Phillies. Eikhoff was one of the leaders in home runs allowed last year. Gave up 30. One and two. Young man pounds the strike zone, has an exceptional curveball, but doesn't have exceptional velocity, so he really has to pitch to the corners. Wants it down on one two gets it there and Grandall can't lay off. Eikhoff has his third strikeout one gone in the second we go down to Alana. Well guys after this three game set with the Philadelphia Phillies another divisional series with guys that we just saw San Francisco comes to town for a three game set starting on Monday and the expected pitching matchup for that one is a good one Clayton Kershaw against the right hander Johnny Cueto still a lot of tickets available Dodgers.com slash tickets it'll be a matchup you don't want to miss and as far as that series is concerned on Tuesday Matt Moore is expected to go and you can also expect Frankie Gutierrez to be activated against that left handed pitcher. All right Alana a lot of Dodgers getting healthy. Chase Utley takes ball one. Dave Roberts said today that it is not out of the question that Gutierrez Peterson and Forsyth could all be active by next weekend in San Diego. Ike off to the longtime Philly Chase Utley who lines the ball to center. Hangs up in the wind for Odubo Herrera. Two out. 
Another ball crushed. Another ball that the wind just eats up. Left field. Suddenly a victim. Corey Seager a victim. Cody Bellinger. And Cody Bellinger to the plate for his first at bat at Dodger Stadium. And his family was in town in San Francisco for his debut. They're back at Dodger Stadium for his home debut. Building up some frequent flyer miles. Bellinger takes ball one. Cody in his debut series one for ten. That lone hit for the top power hitting prospect in the minors was an infield single off the end of the bat. The 1 0. Inside 2 0 and that's where the Giants pounded him. Uh, he's backed off the plate a little bit. He was almost on the white line the chalk of the batter's box. He's backed off about three four inches. Winds the lines a little narrower here at Dodger Stadium. Two and one. But when he goes back and watches the video with Turner Ward and takes a look and probably getting advice from other veteran left handed hitters like a Adrian Gonzalez. That once the league starts to go to a certain area you're going to have to make sure you can cover it. Going down and away with a 2 1 and Bellinger gets extended this time but misses and it's 2 and 2. Triple A pitching double A pitching doesn't throw strikes as often on the inside half of the plate. They miss in there and Cody could feast on it over here. They're going to get a few less on the heart of the plate. They're going to be able to pound it in there and get strikes or back you off. Now he has five strikeouts in his first ten at bats but he's worked some counts. Does it again here with two gone in the second. They don't throw a lot of three two curveballs with nobody on and two out triple <laughs> either. Don't do that to everybody at this level either. Well, you think about it you know the ace at triple A and maybe the closer make it to the big leagues that year and maybe the third hitter and the fourth hitter on the triple A team do. Outside and Bellinger with a two out walk and then they get here to the big leagues and they bat eighth. Or they bat seven and the pitchers are the mop up guy or maybe a setup guy if he's really really good. It's the rare guy like Urias who comes up and can dominate at his age. Two outs man at first Kike Hernandez now. Puig getting his first day off of the season. He's the last guy to get his first rest. And with that Hernandez starting in right. Ball one. Surprising looking at Kike's career defensive history because it seems like he's played everywhere a bunch. This is only his fourth start in right field. And that's not because of his arm or his range just Yasiel's been there and others. One on one. Speaking of Yasiel how about the pregame show with Alana and Ned Coletti. Fantastic. Talk about must watch TV again. He did the whole interview with Alana and Ned in English. <laughs> God. Uh, here's the 1 1 pitch. PK waits back on it, flips it foul, and it's 1 and 2. And he talked in the interview about how his English is not good, but my goodness, four and a half years here, five years here in the States, it's pretty darn good. What a cute story about. Re meeting his English teacher in Cuba, and when he first went there as a kid, he says, I'm never leaving Cuba, so I don't need to learn English. And then he went back there as a big leaguer, and she goes, How's your English now? Eikhoff yeah. <laughs> deals one, two, and Hernandez turns around a fastball. The wind pushing it to right, and Saunders pulling it in. Dodgers get a two out walk, but no damage against Eikhoff. Threw it two in the opener at Dodger Stadium.
back inside. Joe Davis with Earl Hershiser and uh, Kenta Maeda. Two perfect innings so far. It's only two innings, but he's looked sharper than he has in a while. A little sharper, hitting the target most of the time. A couple of hard hit balls, but that's only going to do increase his confidence. So I'm feeling pretty good. I like the fact that he's using that little nickel curve to steal some strikes at the beginning of the count. Certainly doesn't hurt that he's pitching on the night where the wind is blowing necessarily in, but is going to knock down anything that's hit to left. And really is going to knock down anything that's hit anywhere other than right down the right field line. And when you're thinking about that, you're normally thinking about left handed power hitters. The Phillies only have two left handed hitters in the lineup tonight. Tommy Joseph, bottom third of the Philadelphia order. Maeda comes home to the Phillies' first baseman and gets a swinging strike. Joseph a year ago showed off some of his power in his first big league season debuted in mid May and hit 21 home runs coming inside missing badly and it's one and one look how shallow Bellinger is in left field with that wind howling in this is a big strong right handed hitter but you can tell that it is knocking everything down. It is so rare to have elements here other than maybe just a little bit of heat in Los Angeles. Dodgers thought they were getting out of this when they left San Francisco. The wind followed them. A 1 1 delivery. Again, this is nowhere close. 2 and 1. Kenta looks like he is feeling good, comfortable, but still trying to find rhythm. Looks like he feels strong. Three and one on Joseph. Got a high fastball strikeout at 93 miles an hour, and that's that's going up there for him velocity-wise. He can pitch it 89 to 91 with the two-seamer and touch 93 now with the four-seamer. Full count. Inside change up to a righty tonight. Not a bad pitch. Something you wouldn't do on a normal night all the time and leave it up there. But you really are almost feeling like left field is out. Like you didn't have enough guys to play the game. So everybody's got to hit the ball somewhere else other than left. <laughs> Tommy Joseph leading off the third for the Phillies. And fouling this one back. 25 years old made his first opening day roster this year. He's the guy that's replaced Ryan Howard at first base for the Phillies. They're still paying Ryan Howard I think 10 million dollars this year to stay away and their total salary is only 111 million. Only. <laughs> Payoff. And he gets him for the first out of the third. They winds up striking out Joseph in an at bat where twice he missed by about five feet. Effectively wild right here, but a couple of cutters slash sliders. And you see Maeda's last season got off to a very hot start, and this year trying to recover now here in April. But it is definitely in his first two years in the big leagues going to be his worst start. Last year was so good. He's retired the first seven Phillies and now Cameron Rupp. Oh, for his last seven, five K's during that stretch. Maeda misses for the slider, ball one. The 1-0. One, oh. one and one. You can hear the wind howling in our microphones. At 25 miles per hour at one point today. I haven't checked in a minute, but it is still a stiff wind. As evidenced by those flags out there in center. At least you can trust the flags here. Two on one not the case in San Francisco we talked about that as the series went on Dave Roberts said that that was the most difficult place to play center field that he ever played in just because 
you couldn't trust any of the flags. It's got to be a lonely feeling not knowing where the wind is blowing only knowing that it is. A 2 1 pitch. 3 and 1. And only two flags here at Dodger Stadium. California State flag and the U.S. flag of course out there in center field. Can or a candlestick I went to back to my day AT and T uh, about 30 flags there around different places. None of them worth a darn. <laughs> now 3 1 Rupp drags a ground ball foul and it's full. There There's they are. some more. We can't see those. It's up <laughs> above us. So I counted 12 on the right side so there's 24 and then you got the two out there 26 so I was I wasn't wrong by that much. <laughs> Here's the payoff and Rupp checks his swing on ball four. I didn't miss by much. Sometimes you'll see check swings. And the home plate umpire. Sometimes loses sight of where the pitch actually finishes. This may have been up. It may have. Let's take a look at pitch cast right here. Pitch cast no. has got it for a strike. But I think you're right. A lot of times the umpires do get blocked out by the bat and the distractions. They lose their strike zone a little bit, at least the edges. Adrian Johnson back there calling it a ball. First base runner for the Phillies brings up Jared Eikhoff. Eikhoff looking for his first hit of the year and also his first W with the, even with his ERA at 2.55 and lower now with the zeros he's posted. Corners crash Eikhoff bunts it Gonzalez throws across his body to second to get him. Oh what a tremendous play by the perennial gold glover at first. Tom Woodring out there to second base umpire rings him up. I'm sure there'll second be a slight delay here for the Phillies to want to check on this as Larry Boa hits the horn. He still works over the sunflower seeds. Well, here's what happened. Look at Chase Sutley over there to get that one step back. And if he gets him by one step and this holds up, it's because of that pick right there that Chase Sutley, the fake right here. Watch it again. Watch Chase go to first. There's one step so he doesn't get the best jump off of first and they're able to get him out at second base. That was a great play. Yeah it was less than one foot Nomar when he gets down there he's going to they're going to make this out by about six inches. And it was another detail that Chase Hutley brings to the game. Second time through Cesar Hernandez takes ball one and that, and that was if you saw the setup before with first baseman and Chase all the way over there you rarely see that but they knew what they were doing they were expecting it. And creating that fake was the difference. Nice pick on the other end by Corey Seager too. Kenta deals 1-0. That's ball two. You know, on a play like that, Adrian Gonzalez has to have a fantastic baseball clock. You know, notice he came in and immediately went to the throw. He did not think about, oh, I got to look and see if he got a good jump or not. No, you don't have time for that. He's got to know by the speed of the bunt, the speed of his charge, and the strength of his arm, can he get it there in time? Line pass Gonzalez down the line for a base hit. Hernandez cuts it off. Holds Cesar Hernandez to a single, and they're at the corners with two away. Hernandez has hit Kenta hard twice in the first inning he lined out to Kike and this one he hit a little lower and pulled it a little more. Has a home run against him in his career and in fact while Kenta's beaten the Phillies in both of his starts against them there are four out of the eight hitters in this Phillies lineup that have homers against Kenta. Nobody with more than five A.B.s but four guys with a home run. That includes the man climbing in here, Freddie Galvez. Walking a single here in the third. They're at the corners with two gone. And Maeda to Grandall with the first one. 
Inside, ball one. Galvis grounded out his first time, trying to extend a nine game hitting streak. 27 years old on this young team. Even though he's only 27, even though he's only in his sixth year, he's the longest tenured Philly. Waits on a 1 0. That catches the corner, strike one. It was Galvis that replaced Jimmy Rollins three years ago as the everyday shortstop. He'd been a backup middle infielder to both Rollins and Utley over his first few major league seasons. Eikhoff at third, Hernandez at first, and a 1 1. Curve, yanked towards the right field corner, sailing off the wall. Eikhoff is in to score. Hernandez can't pick it up cleanly, and it's a two run double to begin the scoring from Freddie Galvis. Ball is left up by Kenta right here, trying to go breaking ball low and away. He throws it breaking ball up and down the middle, and that's the last pitch you want to throw tonight with the ball carrying out there to right field. Anything off speed to a lefty, you want to be able to make sure they pull it foul. You got to either get it way in or you get them so far out in front that they hit the top of it. So Galvis now with a 10 game hitting streak and the Phillies with the game's first runs. And it's second with two out and another double Herrera. Here's the first one. And a fastball catches the edge, strike one. If you have an outside corner like that, Kenta needs to wear that out out there against the left handed hitters. If you can stretch that outside corner with your fastball, make those hitters hit the ball to the biggest part of the park today, which is about three quarters of it, all towards left field. Tried to go there again, this time missed, one and one. Well, Duble Herrera, who's at the plate right now, is the hitter version of Pedro Baez. More than 30 seconds between pitches during his at bats. That's the most in the majors. Pedro's changing his reputation, though, this year so far. The old Pedro. <laughs> okay. 2016 version. Here's a one one. Grounded foul and it's one and two. So he 30 seconds between pitches for Herrera. That's right about where Baez was in 2016. Major League average is 24 seconds. That's where Baez is down to round, down around right now. Okay. Well, we're moving in the right direction. Totally. Really moving in the right direction with his earned run average. <laughs> that too. Pedro Baez is throwing the ball very well. Herrera last year received three letters from the Major League Baseball office about his pace. Able to negotiate that third letter though down to just a third warning as opposed to a fine like it normally dictates. He grounds out to Chase Utley to finish off the Phillies in the third. They get two and take a two nothing lead. Omar's getting some snacks delivered. Hope he brought his appetite.
Third, let's check it with Nomar. Well, I told you about this section here at the Loge level, the party section. Look what they brought me. I got Dodger dogs. <laughs> I got a sandwich here. I got some wings. I got a fruit cup. You know what they didn't bring me? They didn't bring the nachos that serves 10. That's what I'm going to have to order and get back, the nachos that serve for 10. But I think I'm going to start off with my fruit cup here, and I'll get back to you guys. Playing for the tie there, yeah, huh? You bet. <laughs> Here's a 1-0 and a strike. Before you order the uh, nachos for 10, you should get nine friends. It looks a little lonely down there for I, you. Um, they, they, they text me. They're still stuck still in traffic. Stuck, yeah. yeah, yeah. One and two on Maeda. Yeah, that, that 110 at this time of <laughs> night. <laughs> Nine, one and two for the Dodgers here in the third. Tolls and Seeger to follow. Jared Eikhoff. Maeda puts it in play to short. Galvis was a Gold Glove finalist last year and has this one smoothly for the first out. Number 60, Andrew Tolls. Dodgers are just one base hit so far. A single from Turner in the first inning against Eikhoff. He walked Bellinger, but nobody's gotten past first. Second time through the order now, Andrew Tolls comes up. Takes ball one. Andrew in a key spot here, leading off tonight, had been moved down. Dave didn't like the fact that he looked like he was pressing a little bit. Corks a base hit to right center. One out single for Tolls. And the two hottest guys in the Dodgers, that leadoff spot with Corey Seager coming and then Justin Turner. Important Corey to get on Seager. base to get this offense sparked. They were flat in San Francisco, still come out of there with a split. And real hard to believe with the way the offense functioned on the road that they got out of San Francisco with a split. They hit 188 as a team in the series at San Francisco. And you know, you really hard loss in game three. So on the surface, splitting the four games there doesn't feel good. But when you consider they did it despite hitting 188, it feels a little different. Corey Seeger misses at the first one, strike one. They had seven runs over the first, consider the nine innings yesterday a game, seven runs over the first four games, and then got four in the tenth inning alone. Perhaps boosting the offense into this homestand. Seeger cracks another fly ball into the teeth of the wind, and Aaron Altair is under it for the second out. It was really up and down the Dodger lineup. Guys struggled to get going in that series. Gonzalez, Grandal, Tolls, Hernandez, all with just one hit, averages 100 or below. And they left a ton on base. So even with a 188 average with some walks, they had some opportunities. They weren't able to cash in on it. Lead the National League and runners left on base in this young season. Turner bats with tolls at first and two away. Eikhoff pitches, ball one. The positive is they have been able to set the table in a lot of different innings, but just haven't been able to drive guys in. The Dodgers believe that is going to turn around. Here comes a 1 0. And he shoots another base hit to right. Tolls heads for third. Saunders' throw is cut off. Justin Turner's two for two. And the Dodgers are at the corners with two gone. Well, Justin Turner continues to swing a hot bat, and I'll tell you what, he's got his base hit and his double swing down. This is a single, but he is leading the National League in doubles. And right here, he is finding the holes. Keep talking about how you expect his power bat to heat up, the homers to come. How about this note from the great Brian Hagan? Justin Turner in his career has one April home run. So yes, he's only been a real power hitter for a year and a half or so. But he's never been a power hitter in the month of April. As the weather heats up, so does he. 
Two out chance for Adrian Gonzalez. May 3rd is Vin's night here, and what did Vin call Adrian Gonzalez? Butter and Eggman. Trying to deliver here in a 2 0 game in the third. That one gets away. Here comes Tolls. There will be a play. He's in safely. Turner read it well. Holds on at second. It's a 2 1 game. Boy, had Cameron Rupp gotten rid of that thing as soon as he got to it, Tolls was dead to rights. Eichhorn throws the curveball. We talked about that wind helping it, but he spiked that one too, and Rupp hesitates. As you watch this ball get away from right here, the first grass, then he loses it a little bit to Griffin as he shuffles it to Eichhorn. It's going to be late, but in the first attempt. Good God, Andrew. Adrian Johnson there behind the plate trying to block it. It's a little late. So the Dodgers on the board here in the third. And now a base hit from Gonzalez could tie the game. It's ahead of Eikhoff 1 and 0. Here it comes. Outside ball two. Adrian getting yesterday out of the starting lineup. Dave Roberts trying to get him healthy. A 2 0. That is line behind second. Galvis takes it away to finish the inning. Perfectly positioned and then perfectly executed by the former Gold Glove finalist. But the Dodgers get on the board. It's 2 1 after three. LA is brought to you by the Ram 1500 Rebel. Experience the power and toughness of Ram at your local dealer. Make something up. Tommy John told Dr. Frank Joe, who's trying to come back from the elbow problem in 1974. This is a shot three years later, his second year since returning from the first Tommy John surgery. Shot of him against the Phillies. Andrew Toll scoring the Dodgers' first run of the game, 2-1. We head to the fourth. And Kenta Maeda to face the middle third of this Phillies order. So when Tommy John told Frank Job, come up with something, figure it out, make something up, Job's mind started thinking, gears started turning. He thought about a procedure that had been used in the past for polio patients. Michael Franco takes a strike. And the doctors would take a tendon in the wrist and they'd use it to strengthen the polio patient's ankles. And the thought from Dr. Job was theoretically this could work on an elbow too. The 0 1, ball one on Franco. 
So the tendon taken from the wrist or from the leg they decided over the next couple of years that this could develop into a ligament. Ligamentization happens the tendon adapts to its new role once it's put into the elbow and technically becomes a ligament. It is one one pitch. Franco smacks it into the overshift. That's Chase Utley playing over there for the first out of the inning. Frank Job said that if it worked, if it became something that could save players' careers, five, Tommy Sullivan. John was the guy that deserved credit for having the courage to go forward with a surgery. He said it didn't take any courage for me to make the operation up. That's why it's not Frank Job surgery. It's Tommy John surgery. And Tommy pitched for a long time after having his elbow put together by the great Dr. Frank Job. Another 2,500 innings, Oral, without missing a start because of arm problems. Michael Saunders looks at a fastball off 1 0. That ligament they put in there, and they've put in a lot of pitchers and regular players' arms, continues to hold up, stretched every time you throw a baseball. Two and out. Finished second in Cy Young voting the year after he missed the entire year. You know, the very first operation, though, didn't go particularly well. The hand kind of curled up into a claw. His fingers were frozen. And it looked like the surgery had been a failure. So they went in for a second surgery to correct it. And that's when it healed correctly. And it's changed the sport. People think and I think I'm one of them that Dr. Frank Job should be in the Hall of Fame. He has more wins and more saves than anybody. A 2-0. Saunders hits a ground ball that sneaks through both Utley and Gonzalez for a base hit to right. Number 23, Aaron Altair. Not a five hopper. And Five hoppers don't get through unless they're right exactly in the middle of the hole, and that's where that one was. Each fielder could take about two and a half steps in a dive, and it still found it. So my eight and out of face, Aaron Altair. Ball one. While we're on the topic of Tommy John and arms, brings you to Maeda's contract, which was uniquely set up because of some irregularities in the physical. Low risk, very low end of the contract if things were to go poorly, but a very high end if Maeda is able to stay healthy and pitch like a major league caliber starter, which he did as a rookie. It's one and one. All kinds of bonuses and incentives that he was able to rack in his rookie season. The minimum salary per year for him is three million, but it can go up over eight years to equal more than a hundred million. Most of that is about health, not his performance, appearances, starts. Two and one. And Kenta was betting on himself. He said, you know, I understand. I've dealt with a lot of different things throughout my whole career, and I understand you do have a risk in me, and, I, and I'll, t I'll bet on myself. I still want to come over and be a Dodger. Yeah, he said, I want to repay them with results. 2-1. Altair hits it foul, and it's 2-2. Two and two. Now, Maeda in Japan top five in the league in innings pitch seven consecutive seasons never had extended disabled this time there and even with that contract that was entirely structured around those irregularities in the physical he was the only guy last year that stayed in the rotation all season he brings it 2 2 off of Grandal's glove up to second goes Saunders. 
You know, Osmani showing his frustration. He's had a few of these in the last four or five days where he's trying to frame the pitch and keep the ball on the, the plate. At least the illusion of the ball is on the plate because of where he holds the glove. And you see this the flex off the webbing of the catcher's mitt. Trying to get the bulk of that glove on the plate and then just grab the ball so it looks like it's on the corner. Saunders is second with one gone, and Maeda to Altair with a 3 2. And he got him at the knees with a nice slider for out number two. This pitch is pinpoint right here. Yasmani doesn't need to frame it at all. Just catch it. It's right there. That's got to give Kenta some confidence. Dodgers got him a run last inning. He's only down by one. Trying to finish off this inning. Four K's, one walk. Phillies with the two runs off three hits against Kenta. Tommy Joseph was a strikeout victim his first time. Up. The wind will push it towards the seats and create a souvenir. Actually, bounds back on top of the dugout and some English on it into the first row. Tommy Joseph, former highly touted Giants prospect, was a second round pick. They traded him in the Hunter Pence deal in 2012 and made his major league debut last year. Saunders is second with two away. Maeda to the plate with an 0-1. Strike two on Joseph. Started his career as a catcher. The only reason the door opened into the majors for him was because he moved to first following a fifth concussion. It was basically either your career's over or find a way to play a different position because it's not safe to catch anymore. Here's an 0-2, and Maeda gets him with a fastball over the inside half. Back-to-back -back K's after a runner moved into scoring position. Nomar crushing it.
Thursday on an all-new episode of Backstage Dodgers follows Sergio Romo as he returns to San Fran for the first time as a Dodger. Plus, get an inside look at Cody Bellinger's big league debut. Don't miss Backstage Dodgers presented by Hankook Tires Thursday at 7 o'clock on Sportsnet LA. UCLA night here at the ballpark. Got some Bruins slash Dodger fans out there as Yasmani Grandal grounds the first pitch to the fourth inning to first for out number one. Jared Eikhoff, 26 years old, from Evansville, Indiana, originally. Chase Utley. Went the junior college route and was going to go to Western Kentucky after junior college ball, but he was drafted in the 15th round by the Rangers and still was very torn right up until the last day that he had to make that decision and said that he had a dream that he got a text message telling him to sign the pro contract. It's an interesting way to be spoken to through a text in a dream. That's a very millennial way to be spoken to. <laughs> I guess so. Chase Otley. Strike one. I'm allowed to say that because I technically am one. Okay. I just think it's interesting period. <laughs> no matter what age no, group. I agree. <laughs> and then to act on it. <laughs> And then to tell the story. I went to. Yeah, don't admit it if that's why you made the decision. He came from Texas to Philly in the Cole Hamels deal a few years back. Utley pushes one foul. There were five prospects that were dealt, and Eikhoff was kind of a throw in. There were three guys that were very highly touted that now make up two, three, and four in the Phillies prospect rankings. But Eikhoff, the first out of the group to make the majors, and he's proven very reliable. As good a number as even as Cole Hamels, the man that he was traded for, one and two. That's when the organization wins. That's when all the scouts that are out there writing the reports on a daily basis on all the minor leaguers around baseball, on all the guys that are going to be drafted in the June draft. Whole organization evaluates those trades, and they say, "Okay, you know, what's your what's your group here? You know, who are the guys we need to target? Some of the guys are on the A list, some of the guys are on the B list, some of the guys are on the C list. If there's a throw-in, and that's where the scouts really earn their money. Almost anybody can pick the Oriuses and the Seegers and different people. Full count. It's the guys in the rest of your organization that." are being scouted where maybe an organization doesn't value them quite as highly. Doc Peterson, Chris Taylor right there with his back to us, and Corey Seager. Oh, that's Scott, Scott Casimir. It looked like Chris Taylor. We have a Casimir sighting. This is a 3-2. Ed Chase yanks one just outside the bag. It's got through a 50-pitch bullpen, and Rick Honeycutt was there to observe, and they're still working on some mechanical things, waiting for some velocity to increase. but. They say he's getting closer and feeling healthier. Eikhoff with another 3-2. And Utley with a cue shot to third. Mike Alfranco, two out. Mikoff now in his second full major league season. Made his big league debut right after he was acquired in that trade. Kind of did a sink or swim thing. Let's see what we got with this guy. He was solid in those eight starts as a rookie, and then last year didn't miss a start in his first full major league season. Two outs, Cody Bellinger. Mikoff pitches to him. Bellinger bunts it against the shift. How about that for a base hit? His first big league hit was a swinging bunt. And now this one where he lays it down perfectly. You know, earlier today, the first action on the field for the Dodgers were four of the young guys out there working on their bunting. They were bunting off a machine. Bob Guerin was running the drill. Kike was out there. Tolls was out there. Bellinger was out there. And it worked very well. Two big league hits, both of them infield hits. 
Thought he was the top power prospect. Uh, here's Hernandez. He proved that when he broke his bat and hit a ball with home run distance in San Francisco. And he also proved it to me with some of the swings and the distance he hit the ball in Arizona spring training. Just misses ball one. DK flied to right his first time. Now the one all fouled back it's one and one Dave Roberts was talking today about Cody Bellinger somebody straight up asked him is Bellinger here to stay and Dave thought about it and said I don't think it's fair to say that right now and he reiterated that the fact that re reiterated the fact that Bellinger is here because of injuries now he performed well to put himself in position to get called up there's a one one. And it's poked to left center field. The wind won't knock this one down. Altair can't get it. Bellinger's headed for the plate. And this game is tied at two. Let's take a look at the Morongo Casino Resort and Spa slow mo cam. This ball is spanked. Got a little bit of top spin on it, but he hit it through the wind. Altair, he tries to get this. Oh, it hits the back of his glove. Thank you, Morongo, with that slow mo shot. You know what I love about it is the bunt by Cody Bellinger. Because here you're thinking, okay, why is he bunting? You know he has some power, but they were giving it to him. And now when they start looking at that, they may not shift on him when they realize we're as far. And not only that, what does it set up? It sets up that RBI double. That ties the game and brings up Maeda. Takes ball one. And the final piece of that trickle down is that you don't have your pitcher leading off the next inning. The little things. So Hernandez, who has come alive over the last week or two, has the issue even at two in the fourth. He stands at second with two gone. Maeda takes ball two. A little bit of a rattle, the young guy, but he throws a lot of strikes. Last year, and he was only fourth in the National League in walks per nine innings. So, very good control command guy. Doesn't back down from any situation. Strike one. Dodgers trying to snap the Phillies six game winning streak. And trying to win back to back games themselves for the first time in two weeks. Only the third time this year. Here's a two one. And a ground ball is short. Freddie Galvis knocks it down. Picks it up. Throws late. And Aaron Galvis leaves the door open in the fourth. Who'd have known that a two out bunt would start to open the floodgates. Kike Hernandez gets the double after that. Now Kenta Maeda doesn't strike out, gets it in play. And Galvis just flat out boots this ball. And Maeda didn't assume anything. He ran down the line. Defense Galvis's calling card. But here, it costs him. The Dodgers have them at the corners with two out for Andrew Tolls. Tolls struck out looking in his first at bat. In the second at bat got the line drive to right center, so feeling better about himself in this two out RBI situation. Huge hit for him yesterday. The base is loaded and the game tied at one in the 10th inning. Holes entering that at bat was three for his last 27. He was able to come through with a base hit that broke the tie. And 
floodgates open. Dodgers scored four in that inning and won the series finale 5-1. Looking for their first lead of the night here. Hernandez at third and Maeda at first. I'm really surprised they are holding Maeda on over there at first with tolls up and the wind blown out to right. He's going to try and use that hole. Curve strike one. And then they throw an off speed pitch that lets you take a shot at the hole. I, I just don't understand the philosophy there by the Phillies. I got to be behind my Ada, bluffing them a little bit, extending my defense back. There's no way with a man in scoring position that Kenta is stealing at any time. One and one. Just doesn't add up. Well, very surprising for me with Larry Boa on their coaching staff, who the glove wizard at shortstop for the Phillies for so many years and understands infield play better than anybody. Here comes the one-one. Maeda does run. Tolls lays it down. Eichhoff throws to get it. And so the Dodgers. Do tie the game. Hernandez looking around like what in the world was was that with two outs. But he's able to even the issue with his long double after four. LA is brought to you by your Southern California Toyota dealers. Get incredible deals on a spacious new Sienna. Toyota's leading the way sales event. Mike Schmidt against the Dodgers back in the 70s. Hit against everybody, although hit fewer home runs against the Dodgers than any other team in his career. This one's tied at two. On to the fifth inning. Joe Davis, Ole Hershiser, Alana Rizzo, Nomar Garcia Parra with us tonight as well. Cody Bellinger extending that fourth inning with a bunt with two outs, scoring on a double from Hernandez. Before Andrew Tolls bunted with two outs on a play that looked like everybody thought there was one out. I don't know. They were playing a little different game than I played. In that inning, I didn't understand it. I understand it. Cody Bellinger's bunt. I didn't understand Tolles' bunt, and I didn't understand Maeda running. I would think you'd want your left-handed hitter to pick on the pitcher, try to use the right side, leave your pitcher over there as the runner, so the defense, the way the Phillies were playing it, would be wide open. And only adding to the question marks popping over our heads was Kike Hernandez's reaction as he went home. He kind of had the palms up, wondering the same thing. Exactly. Cameron Rupp leads off this inning against Kenta Maeda. 8 9 and 1 for the Phillies in ball one. Maybe you showed Michael Jack Smith there. Phillies, you think he's got to be the number one third baseman in RBIs all time for the Phillies as far as in a single season? The only reason I mention this because these names. Lave Cross in 1894 <laughs> at 125. <laughs> a little jam shot. 
Hotley's there for the first scout. Second is Pinky Whitney with 124, 1932. And then we finally get to Michael Jack Schmidt, 121 in 1980 when they won the world championship. First guy's name is what? Lave, L-A-V-E. Last name? Cross. Lave Cross. And Pinky Whitney. Hey, anything to get Pinky on the That's air. what I wanted to get Pinky on. <laughs> Pinky Tuscadero. <laughs> Pinky Whitney. <laughs> Jared Eikhoff up there with one out in the fifth. Kenta deals and misses. Eikhoff scored Philadelphia's first run of the game. Hernandez was right behind him on a two run double from Freddie Galvis. Strike one. That's a base hit to left. Eikhoff with his first hit of the season, and it comes with one gone here in the fifth inning. Second baseman, Cesar Hernandez. So back to the top and Cesar Hernandez. Singleton scored his last time. He's the man that took over for Chase Utley as the everyday second baseman for the Phillies. He was initially considered kind of a placeholder at second as they overhaul this roster, rebuild things. But in his first year as an everyday player last year, he posted the highest on base percentage for a Philly in six years. And he takes strike one. He got a late June last year. His on base percentage, though, was below 300. Major league average around 320. So he was well worse than big league average halfway through the season. By the end of the year, the best in six years. They're on a long road trip. They were in Minnesota, interleague series. And Pete McCannon benched him. And he said, look, Cesar, this isn't rest. You're going to be sitting here next to me if you don't change things around, if you don't change your approach. Level out your uppercut swing. They say that immediately after his batting practice looked entirely different. Protects here, still 0 2. A couple days off to change the swing, change his approach mentally. Put him back in the lineup two days later because of an injury. So McKenna wanted to keep him out even longer, but had no choice but to put him back in. He went four for four, and the rest of the way had a 427 on base percentage. That's over the final three months. One and two. I'm sure he has thanked his manager since then. I didn't even take him to dinner. So became an on base percentage machine last year. He's now started to hit for power. Already four home runs this year after he only hit six a year ago. Two and two. Played last year at 165 pounds, but hit the weight room. Feeling good about the 2016 season. Packed on 15 good pounds. Tweaked his swing a little bit more to be able to generate some more pop. And didn't wait to show it off. Had a leadoff home run to open the season. First time that happened for the Phillies since the 1930s. Drills this one. Left center field. Bellinger cruises under it. And Hernandez is out number two. Can't take your eye off any fly ball out there and left. You don't know what that wind's going to do to it. It's going to knock it down, but you got to look it all the way into your glove. Galvis knocked home the two Phillies runs with his double in the third. He's a childhood friend of Cesar Hernandez. These two grew up in Venezuela. A couple hours apart, grew up playing against each other. Signed the same year with the Phillies. Ball one. Freddie started playing baseball when he was four, but Played it a little bit differently where he was from. They played in the streets. So there are all kinds of 
Natural brakes built in anytime a car came through. Move the bases, move the game off to the side. Takes a strike, it's one and one. Divided the teams up based on what street you lived on. He lived on 13th Street. That's why he wears number 13. Ready for a 1 1. Just slow. Two balls, one strike. In my day, you made your bases in the street with chalk uh, yeah. a little bit, so you didn't have to move those, but you did have to move the game, the bodies. <laughs> right. Ground ball backs up Gonzalez. He'll take it to the bag. That does it for the Phillies in the fifth. We're halfway home here in the homestand opener and locked it to. Luck Charm and purchase a five game weekend plan starting at $20 per ticket. If the Dodgers win all five games of you, that you pick, you win two tickets to Fan Appreciation Day, September 24th, and be recognized in a group photo on the field. For more information, visit Dodgers.com slash mini plans. Phillies two, Dodgers two, bottom of the fifth inning, and Corey Seeger will lead this inning off. Joe Alana and Nomar tonight. The wind gusting. In fact, they just announced in the stadium that if it continues, we'll have to cancel the fireworks. That's how windy it is. Seen it affect a few batted balls. Not a bad night if you're Kenta Maeda trying to settle back in when home runs have been the biggest issue. You can find places to get out. And the only time they've scored is when they hit the ball down in the right field corner. E.K. Hernandez turned the win around a little bit there in left center, but he had a solid line drive that blocked a little bit of the wind because it was low, and the bleachers are blocking some of that. Turner and Gonzalez to follow in this inning against Jared Eikhoff, who's thrown 65 pitches, three Ks, a walk. Dodgers getting the two runs off five hits. Started him with a breaking ball and a generous outside corner for strike one. Back to back days with home runs for Seeger, who has more hard hit balls this year than anybody in baseball. Takes it up, it's one and one. If you measure hard hit balls at 96 miles per hour exit velocity and above, there's 35 of those. Nobody else has more. Off of the handle here, Rupp gives it a look. But that's all. 
So 35 is more than one a day. That's pretty right. good. I mean, guys go up there three, four at bats in a game. Maybe you get five on some nights, and you're hoping to hit the ball hard once or twice. And this guy's doing it more than once that evening. Hit some balls hard in Chicago. He didn't get anything for into that wind. These hitters are waiting for when are we going to play a night without wind blowing in? Two and two. Yeah, four game series in San Francisco where ball doesn't fly very well ever. Similar conditions for this one. Breaking ball, bullet, foul. Had that been straight, that would have been hard hit ball number 36 of the year for Corey. It was only register if they're fair. Leading off the fifth in a 2-2 game against the Phillies young righty Jared Eikhoff. Who's back home with a 2-2. Outside full count. Justin Turner. Two for two tonight. Waits on deck. And Seeger takes ball four. Watch that thing the entire way and a curveball that began as a strike and finished in the dirt. Look at the Carl's cam on Seeger's two singles or on Turner's two singles. Line drive to left center. See the wind knock that down and then a base hit to right through the hole right here. Justin Turner used that hole with a man on first. Outstanding professional hitting. He is now Oral against Jared Eikhoff, four for four, two singles, a double, and a homer. Fastball just misses, ball one. Eikhoff's got to be thinking, what do I got to do with this guy? Justin's hitting 378 on the season and coming into the game during the hit streak, he was hitting 378. Now he's two for two to add on to that. 2 and 0. He's probably over 400 during the hit streak now. Players hate to talk about their numbers, so we can say it on the air, but hopefully he'll have it on mute when he watches the replay. Tradition of his, usually turning us on in the morning, watching it back. Oh, he only mutes like, I don't know, the parts where I talk. Oh, he... There's a drive to left field. Overall tears head, but he goes back to pull it in. Uh, maybe it was hit low enough to cut through the wind, but not tonight. Yeah, a lot of balls hit by Corey Seager and Justin Turner this year so far that they say, you know, later in the summer, this ball is gone. Well, this ball is gone at Dodger Stadium every night, but tonight because of this wind, 25 mile an hour wind coming in there from left. Last time a ball at Altair had to go back on like this was Kike Hernandez. Ball hit the back of his glove. This one. He gets in the middle. Tied at two in the fifth. Gonzalez comes up. They want this first pitch to him down and away. Leaks over the plate and he makes him pay with a base hit to center. Seeger heading first to third. Herrera's throw not in time. And they're at the corners. First of all, what a great at bat by Adrian Gonzalez, taking that ball right back up the middle. They wanted that ball away. It was actually tailing away, and he stays on it. But what, it, what also was impressive, this was hit really hard. And you see how shallow the center fielder is, Herrera out there, and Corey Seager doing a great job going first to third. Definitely changes the entire at bat here for Yasmani Grandal because you get a man on third base with less than two outs. And a tie game. Dodgers trying to take their first lead of the night. Asmani now one for his last 14. But like Nomar mentioned, no longer takes a base hit to get the job done here. Swing and a towering fly ball to right. Seeger's already waiting on the bag. As Saunders settles under, comes forward and makes the catch. Throw to the plate. Not in time. The Dodgers lead it 3 2. <laughs> Thank
thanks to the hustle from Seeger, the read from Seeger on the base hit from Gonzalez. This fly ball from Grandal produces the lead. This is where you just appreciate the hustle that Corey Seeger did to get from first to third, especially as Monte Grandal. Like I said, now you're looking for a ball up in the zone. Just a sacrifice fly does the job. We talk about the Dodgers over the course of this season. They haven't been doing the little things as much as they would like. Right there, it pays off. And a man at first with two gone. Chase Utley comes up and takes ball one. So after the Phillies got two in the third, the Dodgers with single runs in each of the three innings since. Eikhoff deals one all. That's in there. Here comes a 1 1. Utley smacks a base hit to center. Two on with two out. Up comes Cody Bellinger. We start getting production from all the other components around Turner and Seeger. Adrian Gonzalez getting a hit. Chase Utley finding one right here. This lineup starts to get very long and tough to get through. So the Dodgers taking a 3 2 lead and a mound visit here. I'm still moving against Eikhoff, who's still looking for his first win of the season despite good numbers for the Phillies. This offense is a boost to confidence for Kent Maeda, too. He gives up the two runs early, he's down 2 0, and all of a sudden he finds himself being able to take the mound with a lead. You feel a little bit better about your stuff and your. Future. In some ways, he knows the things that have been rumored around the club as far as, you know, what's going on with Maeda and how are they going to handle it if he has another rough outing? Well, he's got a chance to get himself a W now. Good spot for Bellinger here. No pressure on him. With two on and two out, the lead has already been taken. He started the rally in the last inning with a bunt. Swings and misses, strike one. Cody's got a little bit of Jock Peterson, a young Jock Peterson in this swing right here, where Jock has kind of cut back on his swing as he's had more and more time in the big leagues. And Jock figured it out that you don't have to hit it 450 feet to get a home run. You can hit 360, 380, and make more contact. A lot of adrenaline running in the batter's box right now. I know I've seen Tommy Lasorda say to him before, just over the fence. It counts the same. Eikhoff to Bellinger with a 1 1. And Cody swings, pulls one, base hit to right. They give the wave to Gonzalez. Saunders' throw is in time, and the inning is over. Outfield assist from Michael Saunders keeps Cody Bellinger from his first career RBI. Cody got his first big league legitimate hit. <laughs> Swinging bunt, bunt, and now a line drive.
try here. I'll tell you what, this is what Dodger Stadium has now. I got a poke bowl. I got some a noodle bowl. I got some tater tots. I mean, how about that, guys? Tater tots, King's Hawaiian tri-tip going, and I even have dessert. I got a funnel cake. I got fried Oreos, and I got fried Twinkies. So um, I'll be over here if you need me, guys. Wow. Yeah. Don't talk with your mouth or, full. Or actually, I may not be here if you need me because I'll be say. eating. <laughs> Did you say fried Oreos? Yeah, there, there's some fried Oreos here. I can send them up after I eat about three of them. I wouldn't mind trying one okay. fried Oreo. Split it. Nadubo Herrera to lead off the six for the Phillies. Maeda pitching with the lead for the first time. And pitching into the six for the first time this year with strike one. It's a great night to pitch, and it's really a great night when you get off to a little bit of a slow start. And your offense comes through for you. The Dodgers now with eight hits through only five at bats. Oh, and two, a nice pitch for the change. Kenta still looks like he's out there figuring it out. Even after a quality pitch, doesn't seem to have much pacing there. Just kind of staring off in the distance, processing what he needs to do. Against the three hitter Herrera going upstairs but missing and ball one. Randall wanted that ball above the letters and Maeda Miss below the knees. There have been several of those pitches tonight where he's badly missed his spot. When you're going up in the strike zone, you're going to throw it hard. If the hard emotion comes in before your front foot hits, that's when you pull the ball. That's when you miss your target. You've got to go hard into something, and that is your front leg when it lands. Back to the change. Barely got a piece. Still one and two. So a little better rhythm. And accuracy with the off speed stuff because he's not driving as hard and putting as much effort into it. It's not that you can't put a lot of effort into the fastball and the hard stuff, but you've got to have it timed up properly. Pretty good ratio right there, but Kent a little bit more of a control pitcher, usually a little better than that. That's his sixth punch out of the game and the first out of the sixth inning. Really good arm speed on this change up. The last one had unbelievable accuracy the one you commented on Joe but that one right there the great arm speed and right down the middle. Mike Alfranco with the bases empty and one gone. So Maeda has now recorded 16 outs in this game. Only two of them have been fly balls. Franco takes ball one. One of them was a pop up. One of them was a fly out to left. He wasn't one of the best in baseball last year, but that 36 percent is better than league average where he was a year ago. The 53 percent. Highest fly ball rate in the National League, one and one. And so it's no wonder he's seen the ball fly out of the yard at the rate that he has. Seven home runs over his first four starts. Much better tonight, though. One one to Franco. Bottom of the zone, strike two. You know on the road we had those rally lights on cell phones now at least we've got a, the, the old wave is back that's a little better for the players. Franco smacks it to first they had him turned around to pull that ball but Gonzalez able to circle around it to step on the bag for out number two. And so this becomes an interesting equation for the Dodgers and a good problem to have wondering where Maeda fits with Alex Wood having pitched a great game two nights ago Julio Rios showing that he belongs once again Rich Hill coming back hopefully before too long 
And Dave Roberts in the front office not wanting to go to a six man rotation for any extended period of time. Strike one and a ground ball off of the bat of Michael Saunders. It's always good to have too much pitching. So you always want to hope that everybody's doing well. The fact that Kenta is throwing the ball better tonight is a great sign. 0 oh 2. That changeup has been working lately. He's really making a conscious effort to miss down, changing his spray pattern from his other outings where it was throwing the ball down but missing up, so up towards the thigh and the waist. Tonight it's more throw the ball down but miss down if you miss anywhere. Saunders protects still 0 2. One for two, strike out in a single. For the former Mariner, the former Blue Jay, lived a dream last year and the year before playing for Toronto. He's Canadian, grew up a Blue Jays fan. Oh, 2 in the dirt, ball one. You know, Kent has been hurt by the fastball in where he doesn't get it in enough. This is really perfect pitch. The last pitch would have been a perfect pitch to throw a fastball in and know you just can miss in. You got a big tall guy. You don't want him to extend his arms. And you got a count where you don't need to throw a strike. You're still going away. One thing that happens mentally for a pitcher when you don't go in and get it way in there is that you start to feel like you have to be perfect away. That the hitters know I pitch away and I've, I've been out there and I'm living out there and I want to go back out there, but you feel like you got to throw the perfect pitch and throwing it in off the plate can get you some room away. And he strikes out Saunders to finish the inning. Kenta Maeda, six innings. The Dodgers with a 3 2 lead. What do we got here? Wow. Oh my gosh. Look at Thank this. Thank you, huh? Noma. Dodgers baseball on Sportsnet LA is brought to you by Nissan. Choose Nissan today for great offers on our most exciting lineup ever. Shop choosenissan.com. And by Carl's Jr., the breakfast burger served all day at Carl's Jr. Back at Dodgers Stadium, Dodgers in front of the Phillies 3-2. And Jared Eikhoff back out to pitch to Kike Hernandez. 8 9 and 1 for the Dodgers in this inning. Outside ball one. Um, an update for you the fried Oreos are the greatest thing ever. <laughs> and you can scarf down almost two in a, in a break. That's a missile down the left field line fouled and caught down there. 
One and one. Yeah. Uh, you're welcome, fellas. I was, you know, thinking of you, and I knew I'd have to send them right over. And it's funny because I got a text from my daughter, and she said, hey, can you bring the dessert home for me? <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Better get a big box. A 1-1. One, one. Slips from Eikhoff. 2-1. One, one. Jared Eikhoff against Kike Hernandez starting the sixth inning. Dodgers with single tallies against Eikhoff each of the last three frames. Two and two. Hernandez with an RBI double. That was in the fourth to tie it. He's really the only ball or the only guy to get a ball over an outfielder in left or in center tonight with the way the wind is blowing. Just off of Altair's glove in left. It's his ball well to center, but Herrera is there for the first out. And it appears Kenta Maeda will hit for himself, Oral, which means he'll be back out there for the seventh inning. Well, that's really encouraging. Dave okay, Robert showing Kenta, conviction and confidence in Kenta. Strike one hadn't gone into the sixth yet this year in his first four starts. And after a one two three sixth inning in this one he's poised to go seven or at least into the seventh. Nothing in two. The starting rotation has been sporadic at best. Clayton Kershaw every fifth day has been excellent. But they've been looking for another starter to be able to go beyond five even. Dave was saying they need them, need these starters to start going deeper. Reaches out and flips this one in the air to first for Tommy Joseph in the second out of the inning. Well, the seven-man bullpen nowadays that you have, you, you get your starters 60. to to Andy go six, oh. it starts to feel very comfortable down there. Clayton's been going anywhere from seven to nine. Brandon McCarthy has gone deep and been excellent. The one-two punch there. Ryu has struggled at times to get deep into games, and Alex Wood's last outing has really vaulted him into a place where he's in the equation to stay in the rotation. Tolls hits it foul, strike one. But in general, Dave Roberts looking for one more inning, at least on average, from all the different starters to get deeper in the game, take a little pressure off the bullpen. Kenta Maeda over the final two months last year pitched into the seventh one time. He finished seven twice all year. Did it in his third start against San Francisco. Did it in his final start before the All-Star break when he caved 13 against San Diego. Tolls yanks one into right center for his second hit of the day. And it appears Andrew Tolls has broken out of his slump. You know, there's a couple of different ways when you're in a slump that the manager and the hitting coach think you're coming out. A, quality at bats, deep counts, and hard hit balls that don't turn into out or hits. But I'll tell you what, with Tolls, he has not been hitting the ball hard, but now busting out tonight hitting the ball hard. So this has all come at once. Seeger's 0 for 2, even though he's hit it hard, twice in the air to left. Wrong place to hit it tonight. We have a special guest in the booth right now. Wow, Mr. Lon Rosen. He must have heard there were fried Oreos up here. I think that's what it is. Free food. Dodgers CMO. Dodgers in front of the Phillies 3 2 here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Trying to win back to back games, trying to get this homestand started off right. That's a ball on Seeger. If Lon eats one of the deep fried Oreos, he's going to have to go a little longer in spinning class tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Here's a 1-0. Got in on him, 1-1. One one. 
it'll be worth it. <laughs> you said you said it. You uh -huh. had two on the commercial break. That is an advertisement in itself. I think you could like we could put a picture of you next to the fried Oreos here in the stadium where they're sold. I'd be happy with that. <laughs> One and two. Eikhoff now 96 pitches, so likely nearing the end of his night. Single runs in the third, the fourth, and the fifth. Open getting ready. Luis Garcia. The Phillies on this entire staff, rotation and bullpen, only have one left handed pitcher. Two and two on Seeger. Tolls read that beautifully. Even though it didn't get far away from Rupp, he moves into scoring position. One of the points of emphasis in spring training with the Dodgers was aggressive base running, wanting the players to understand how far they can push the envelope. The out at the extra base would not hurt them in spring training, but help them in the regular season. And Dave Roberts looking at really getting the edges in the game over the top for the Dodgers. Coming so close last year, two wins away from being to the World Series. Looking for every little edge in spring training to get better. On 2 2, Seeger bloops one and foul ground. A win pushing it, but not far enough. And he lives to see another. Not a bad stat right there for a risk. He does that for the rest of his career. That prediction by Adrian Gonzalez will come true. The Hall of Fame one. Yep. Tolls at second, two gone in a 3 2 game. Dodgers trying to add on in support of Kenta Maeda. And another 2 2. Ball three. Sometimes you worry about your starting pitcher that's pushing through a limit as far as innings or pitch count, and then they have a long inning to sit and rest. But Kenta looks like he's doing just fine, not stretching, just going through his normal activities. 100th pitch of the night, Seeger fouls it off. The other nice thing about the long inning is Kenta was part of it. He got to go up there and hit and loosen up in the on deck circle, just came back over there. And now getting a nice rest. So you prefer that if the inning goes long while you're the starter that you're at least involved. I would love to be involved. Yeah it was it was a lot of fun to continue to do something athletically even just to be in the on deck circle and swing the bat. Seeger takes ball four. He's walked for the second time tonight. And Eikhoff's night. Coming to a close. Pete McCannon coming out of the dugout, making a change. Dodgers have two on with two out, and Justin Turner due to bat against the Phillies bullpen.
Line is not the two men on base his responsibility leaves trailing 3-2 and hands it off to Luis Garcia who's not given up a run in four games in the majors this year allowing just one hit during that stretch to left handers mostly fastball splitter to right handers with Justin Turner at the plate it's going to see more fastballs sliders and Justin very adept at going to right field so if he keeps the fastball away and a slider away he can try and shoot the ball that way Justin a little frustrated from his last at bat where he had home run power but not home run distance because of the wind. He's bum Eikhoff is out. Owns it. Here comes Garcia. Strike one. So Turner against Eikhoff now in his career four for five with a home run a double two singles and then what would have been another home run like you mentioned. Had it not been directly into the wind. So it is more than just him running out of gas. It's who's at the plate now, causing the Phillies to go to the pen. Smothered in the dirt by Rupp, one and one. Doesn't shatter a pitcher's confidence and the thinking the manager doesn't trust you in a jam when all of a sudden a guy with these kind of stats comes to the plate. Pretty much know that it's just conventional thinking. And this would have been your last that would have been your last hitter Seeger no matter what. Garcia 30 years old parts of five seasons in the majors although he spent most of last year in the minors. Here he comes with a 1 1 and Turner takes ball two. Too many of these opportunities have produced nothing for the Dodgers early on this season. A lot of one run losses where you can look back on these situations and say what if just one more hit with runners in scoring position. Two and two. When you look at a team's on base percentage or their batting average. You need to elevate that through the season you know you want it to move 20 30 points if they're struggling in those areas. When it's getting a hit with a runner in scoring position during a series, if you can just get one or two more hits in a three game series or a four game series, you turn the whole record around. Up and in on Turner, got away from Garcia at 100 miles per hour. That'll wake you up. And you're glad this is not chin music, that this is like over his head, right out of his hand. No thanks. Go to any batting cage, put a helmet on, crank the machine as high as you want, and it's not that fast. <laughs> Happy Gilmore. <laughs> Hockey season. A 3 2. Turner gets a piece. We'll do it again. Dodgers just to that point about the runners in scoring position and some missed opportunities what it's led to is a one in five record in one run games. One of the ways if you're trying to predict performance moving forward though that's a potentially predictive stat and that it usually comes back to the norm. So you look at a seven and oh Rockies in one run games you expect that to come back closer to five hundred. Dodgers trying to break out in close games. A 3 2. Turner yanks one in the air to left. Altair's back. He won't get this one. Tolls is in. Seeger's in. Turner with a two run double. Now time for the Arco top tier play of the game brought to you by Arco and it's Justin Turner hitting approximately the same ball he did in his last at bat. This one he hits a little bit lower with a little more top spin and gets it over out here. And you know coming into this game Justin Turner had only one home run in April in his career. Well he would have topped that tonight without the wind. He would have had two. You think both those are out. I think that one even goes out maybe with the top spin maybe not. 
hits the wall in the air or the top of the wall, but the other one for sure. So a 5-2 lead now. And Gonzalez climbs in, takes ball one. Justin Turner, three more hits tonight. And his last five games is now 10 for 21. Longest hitting streak in the majors this year. He's done everything but Homer. The 1-0. Behind it, 1-1. One one. The inning continues. Kenta Maeda, when everybody's high-fiving with the runs coming, he was down in the corner there working on his delivery. 16 minutes he's been off the mound but had one at bat. Now Adrian lines one to left but Altair has this one and the inning is over but the Dodgers get two more on a Turner double to lead 5 2 as we go to the late innings. May 3rd is a night you do not want to miss. Make your way out to Dodger Stadium. The first 40,000 fans in attendance will receive a Vin Scully microphone statue. And of course, his microphone is going to be retired onto the Ring of Fame. And it's just an exciting night, guys, because it's against the Giants going back to Vin's days in New York with the rivalry. Make sure you're here with us because he's going to be in attendance. A great opportunity to celebrate and honor his historic career. There's some things you don't want to miss, so I'm told you need to get into your seats early, gentlemen. It'll be a fun night here at Dodger Stadium. Yeah, they're not even telling us everything, only that you're going to have to see it. You're going to have to be there. A lot of surprises. Aaron Altair leads off the seventh. Kenta Maeda pitching in the seventh inning and starting with a strike. Now Vin's first game and we've told this story before this year but his very first game as a Dodger broadcaster came in Philadelphia against the Phillies. Fastball line back to Maeda who spears it. Look what I found one out. Makes a good pitch, shatters the bat, and decides to field it all by himself. Oh, a little snow cone there, rolled right up. Watch his facial expression there at the end in the first replay. <laughs> he was even surprised. He's a really good athlete, oh, yeah. Maeda. He's a gold glove winner in Japan. He was a soccer player before he was a baseball player. That was until his teenage years. Didn't really become really into baseball until Ichiro exploded over there. That's who helped him with so many Japanese players a couple decades ago fall in love with the game of baseball. It's a pop up and two quick outs here in the seventh. 
Kenta is very animated on the mound, catching that line drive, and right there on that pop-up, he started applauding, hitting his glove like he was a fan. He can breathe a little bit easier after the two runs in the sixth inning. This is foreign territory for him here, pitching into the seventh. Could have been felt like walking on eggshells had they not gotten those two runs for him. It's a strike in there to Cameron Rupp. Now then in one. Trying to go seven full for the first time since early July of last year. But a base hit down the left field line from Rupp will bang off of the wall. And Rupp has a two out double. Fastball in the inner half doesn't quite make it all the way there, even though the pitch cast says that it got to the corner. Rupp far off the plate there. Pulled his hands in nicely, hit that line drive. Josh Fields and Luis Avila warming. Love to see Kenta have a chance to finish the seventh inning, though. Check on Kenta right here with Rick Honeycutt. Rick's Japanese not at its best yet. <laughs> Wills is. Kenta's English is getting better because he's nodding his head yes as Rick is talking before Will interprets. So. Kind of like Fernando when Fernando first came in. He didn't let on to how much English he really knew. It's the anniversary today, by the way, of Fernando Valenzuela establishing a major league record with a 41 consecutive scoreless inning streak to start a season. 1985. Ty Kelly the pinch hitter here in the pitcher's spot. Ball one. I think right now there's only 10 complete games in the big leagues. This year? This year? Uh -huh. In the whole big league. Yeah. Fernando had eight in his first eight yeah. outings. Yeah, in the 81 season. Up at second with two gone. And the 1-0 to Kelly. Outside ball two. It's very likely. I can almost say definitively this will be his final batter with the top of the order coming up next. Look at that. You two sitting right next to each other. It's a one-two punch. I always knew I was a little bigger and stronger than Fernando. <laughs> <laughs> For the first time ever right there. <laughs> The 2 0 and a strike, 2 and 1. Dave Roberts and Rick Honeycutt grinding over what they're going to do here if Kenta loses this batter. They were having a conversation, looking over their note cards. That is what is known as top stepping it. Pitch number 100. Is strike two. Great catch by Yasmani to rescue that pitch. Yasmani's had a few pass balls this year because he tries to keep the glove here, but watch how he gets below this and just holds it. <sighs> Trying to finish off seven full. And does with a strikeout. Dave Roberts applause. Kenta Maeda showing that Kenta motion for the first time in 2017.
Our unlimited baseball break is brought to you by T-Mobile. Elsewhere in the National League West, what has become the series of the weekend, Colorado and Arizona, down in Phoenix, Rockies with a 3-1 lead, opening the day a half game behind Arizona, having lost three in a row to Washington and San Francisco with a one-run lead on San Diego. Dodgers up 5-2 in this one. In the bottom of the seventh. And Kenta Maeda, some well-deserved handshakes, high fives, stepping into that dugout with one of the best starts, not just this year, but of his career when you look at the stat line. It's a great response to a very slow start, an eight ERA coming into tonight, one and two record, and really had gotten pounded in his last outing with the home run ball. A very nice outing tonight to restore his own confidence and the organization's confidence in him. A major league debut happening. Mark Leiter Jr., whose father pitched for the Phillies back in the 90s. The fastball is low and it's 1 0. So Kenta goes seven full innings for only the third time in his 37 major league starts. More significantly, like you said, in the context of what he was up against. This was the first time where, in his short career, but the first time where there was any kind of hint of wondering about Kenta's future. What, is, what does it look like his next time out? Does he make his next start? Two and one. And what are your thoughts after watching him tonight? I think, you know, Dave Roberts said he's here for the long haul. And we didn't know if that was going to be moved to the bullpen to see if he can recover his stuff and his location. Grandal with a big bouncer to Hernandez. One out. And you see that right there in the corner of the dugout with Will and he smiling. That's a great relief for Kenta and Will, not only as interpreter, but very close friend. Rick Huntington over there encouraging and talking about why they were successful tonight. And I'll tell you, he just, you know, he needed this outing badly. It's a boost, and they've put in a lot of work. And sometimes I really worry, you know, when you put in a lot of work in between starts to get better, that you're fatigued coming into your next start, but he showed a lot of endurance and a lot of arm strength here today. Jay Zotley, one for three in this one, taking strike one. I think Chase was some more consistent at bats. He started to look more like himself this week. Hit the ball harder last six or seven at bats, even though he hasn't seen the results of hits. He has definitely hit the ball harder and to different places, hitting the ball more to left field, to the left side of the diamond instead of rolling over to the ball at second base. Two and one. Chase against his old team. 13 years in a Phillies uniform. Team that drafted him. More than 1,500 games as a Philly. Lifts a fly ball to left center field that Aaron Altair moves to for the second out. So two up and two down in Mark Leiter Jr.'s big league debut. He and his dad, Mark Sr., become just the second father-son combo in Philly's history. Ruben Amaro, Ruben Amaro Jr., the first. His father won 65 big league games, 17 of them for the Phillies. Cody Bellinger takes low. Remember Al Leiter? Mm -hmm. Al Leiter was his uncle. Still is, I hear. Yeah, he still is. You're right. Al's a friend of mine. Pitched alongside him when I was a Met for one year. He won 162 games. So there's a lot of wins in that family. One and one on Cody, who's reached all three times tonight. A walk and two hits. Two and one. It's a great Al Leiter story. Ron Santo, longtime Chicago Cub, one time had his hairpiece lit on fire at Shea Stadium. It's a ground ball to first. They will feed Leiter Jr., who gets to the bag in time. 
But anyways, he, he sets his hair on fire in the heater over the press box, and he always found it really funny that Al Leiter was the starting pitcher that night. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Dodgers upcoming schedule brought to you by 76 two more with the Phillies and three with the Giants Vin Scully night on Wednesday that caps the series how about Kershaw Cueto to open the series Monday you got to be here for something like that I mean Cueto is amazing to watch with his different deliveries and velocity and he's one of the elite pitchers in the game and he's going up against the best pitcher in the game and Clayton Kershaw. Josh Fields comes in. Those are the top two earned run averages in baseball over the last, was it five or six years now? Mm -hmm. Since 2011, I think. Mm -hmm. Speaking of earned run average, Fields doesn't have one. 0 0 0 on to face the top of the Phillies order. Ninth outing of the year begins with Cesar Hernandez. Ball one. One and one. Josh has done an outstanding job of pounding the strike zone. And got called up and didn't know how long he'd get to stay here. There's been a little bit of a juggling match down there in the bullpen. Different people. Pedro Baez getting healthy. Grant Dayton goes on the DL. Libertor is now down. Swatted to left. Bellinger has it for the first out. In some ways, the guys in the bullpen, certain guys that have options, still they feel like they're pitching to make the team, be. even though they're doing it up here at the big league level and they're gathering their stats. But they're every outing they go out there, they're trying to do their best and put up some numbers so that they can stay here. There's a lot of interchangeable parts down there in the pen. Yeah, we're going to have a slight delay here. A beach ball got out of the field. A beach soccer ball. Soccer was one of Freddie's sports growing up. Played everything. Obviously baseball, but soccer, basketball, ran track. Played volleyball as well in Venezuela. Signed with the Phillies when he was 16. Made his major league debut after six years thanks to a Chase Utley injury. Opening the door for him. He bunts it, but firmly 
Fields dives to knock it down and then throws wildly. Galvis hangs on at first. Great effort by Josh Field. Just a little upset with himself that he couldn't throw it accurately from his stomach. Center fielder number 37, Oduvel Herrera. Osmani giving him a little breather after this effort and knock the wind out of you a little bit. You just want to get your heart rate back down before you start getting the signs and going back at it. But boy, that was a great athletic dive right there. Understanding uh, if it gets to Chase Sutley, it's going to be too late. I've got to make the effort. And he did. Not too many times do you see pitchers with grass stains on the front of their jersey. One out base runner for the Phillies, and Odubel Herrera comes up. One of the cornerstones of this rebuild. They have him locked up through 2021. Field starts him with a curve that misses inside. He was a Rule 5 selection before the 2015 season. Formerly of the Rangers organization. A lot of times you see a guy in the Rule 5 draft and you can tell why. But with him, he won a double-A batting title in 2014. He was the Venezuelan Winter League MVP. But he was blocked in that system. It's one and one. Helmet almost pops off of that swing. A lot of infield depth, so they made him available in the Rule 5 draft. The Phillies claimed him, which means they had to keep him on the Major League roster for the entire season. He was pretty good as a rookie, but an all-star last year. Inside two and one. Mentioned that he was blocked in the infield. Well, he's a center fielder for the Phillies. They've moved him. Started playing the outfield for the first time since he was a young kid, as soon as the Phillies signed him. And has worked with former Dodger Juan Samuel on that conversion. Same conversion Samuel made. Two and two. Samuel now the third base coach of the Phillies. Sammy always does things suave. He's very smooth. Two two from Josh Fields to Odubel Herrera. Fouled off right by Samuel. This helped Odubel Herrera go from being an infielder to a gold glove finalist in the outfield. Consistent early morning sessions before everybody else is out there in spring training. Working on his outfield defense every day. Part of the reason why they were willing to lock him up long term. Guaranteed through 2021, but team options through 2023. Runner at first with one out and fields home 2 2. El Torito is his nickname as a little boy. Little Bull. His dad, Odubel Sr., gave him the nickname when he was a really young kid. He said he was not because he was big and strong, but he was thick, a little bit chubby. So they called him El Torito. It's ready for another 2 2. Fouls another. Doesn't take him long to get to know a pitcher and to be able to fight him off like this. He's got one of the highest on base percentages against relievers. And usually that means you're only getting one at bat off of those guys on a given night. And he picks up the ball no matter what the delivery, no matter what the pitcher is doing, has an idea how to get on base. Fouled off several fields offerings. Here's another 2 2 and another pop foul that will reach the seats. Another thing that stat tells me is that he can catch up to a good fastball. Because the guys coming out of the pen are usually not soft tossers. Yeah. Field certainly isn't. 
I'd love to see Josh spin a breaking ball and bounce it. You don't want to leave it up with that wind blowing out to right, but if you do decide to throw and you just get it down, he shook to the fastball. Yasmani wanted it. We've seen the Dodger relievers get into a pattern of fastball after fastball after fastball up in the strike zone and not have confidence to throw their off speed pitches. Dave Roberts even commented on that in the loss in San Francisco when Ross Stripling was on the mound with Hunter Pence up there, if the fans remember, and threw about seven or eight fastballs at the top of the strike zone. And Pence started in an 0 2 count and finished with a sacrifice fly that beat the Dodgers. Now, on the 10th pitch of that at bat, Herrera winds up singling to the opposite field as they stuck with fastballs. Now Michael Franco will come to the plate representing the tying run here in the eighth. He's fouling off the one by the letters and then you bring it down to the waist a little easier to put the whole barrel on it. And that's what he did. Timing it up was not a problem because he had seen enough of them. Avilan. A couple different things that can wear a bullpen out throughout the whole year. Starters going short and an awful lot of work goes down there. And the second thing is is when you're brought into the game not finishing your job. And that's not a finger at Josh Fields at all. That's just tells you that if you have a clean inning and you're going to have some rough days. The guys in the bullpen don't have to get up. And the next thing is they don't have to come in. So tying run at the plate with one gone here in the eighth and fields to Franco with a pitch that's fouled straight back. Franco a powerful hitter 25 home runs last year. Four home runs this year. Including two grand slams already. So for three today. Former number one prospect in the Phillies system now in his second full big league year. Randall wants it up. Instead, down on a breaking ball, and runners advance to second and third. So either he was crossed up or he was flashing the glove up and then calling for the breaking ball. I think you're right there, Joe. I think they were just trying to deep the guy at second that we're going to flash it up, but we're really going to throw the breaking ball. Yasmani yeah, got down there to block it, but that ball had an awful lot of spin and fell very short of home plate and bounced up off the mask. So things getting a little more interesting than the Dodgers would like here in the eighth second and third with one out. A one and one count on Franco first base open for fields. Who delivers. High fly ball to center tolls back on it. And with a wind it's an out to center runners tag in advance. And it's a 5 3 game and an RBI sack fly from Franco. Yeah, the wild pitch cost the Dodgers a run right there. That ball was crushed. The wind held it up. The wild pitch got him into scoring position over to third. Dave Roberts is going to make a change. With the left handed batty Michael Saunders do next. Likely will be Avila. It is.
Dodgers baseball on Sportsnet LA is brought to you by BMW. See a Southern California BMW Center today for exceptional offers or visit SoCalBMW.com. Back inside the Vin Scully press box. Vin Scully night coming up on this homestand Wednesday against the Giants. In the meantime, it's a 5-3 game. The Phillies have a runner at third with two gone in the eighth inning, and Luis Avilon comes in. Important to get the club in the dugout right here. Save that two-out RBI and stranded at third. Even though there's a left-hander and it's a left-on-left -left situation, Avilon will still default to the changeup. It is outstanding to both types of hitters. Michael Saunders. Here it comes. Strike one. Avilon a big inning of work yesterday in the extra innings win for the Dodgers. Induced a double play to get out of a jam. Herrera's at third. Run in the bank on a sacrifice fly from Franco. The 0 1. There was the change, and it's 1 and 1. This changeup really acts like a screwball. The bottom just drops out of it. With tremendous arm speed, is able to spin the ball with all that arm speed. Here it comes again. For strike two. Catchers are really good scouts sometimes. They, he threw that first change up for a ball. And Yasmani's like, if I can just get that pitch right down the middle with that movement, there's no way you can hit that. But just because you threw it for a ball, but it had great action. And Yasmani scouts it himself and says, I want that one again. Let's get it on the plate. Same thing. Takes this one, two and two. And that's the biggest issue with Mr. Avilon. He doesn't believe that it has to be just right down the middle. If he can just believe that I've got such a good pitch, it's almost like Bruce Souter's split finger in my day. It's just an unhittable pitch. It doesn't have to be on the corner. Make it look like a fastball right down the middle and just let the bottom drop out of it. See what he does, two, two. Yank foul. We'll do it again. A little, little more like it. Yeah, it was down the middle. It just wasn't one of those ones where it was low enough. So you got to give the hitter something. You got to give him height or you got to give him width. So on this one, he gave him both. The height was too high and the width was right down the middle. So he gave him both, and that's why he got a lot of barrel on it. But if you can give them the width, which is I'll give you down the middle, that'll start the bat. But I'm not going to give you height, and it's going to drop. The bottom is going to drop out of it, and that's when you really get him to swing the bat and miss. So he broke his bat, grabs a new one for a two and two count, and a five three game in the eighth. With Herrera at third and two gone. Here comes another changeup. Another foul ball. The run charge to Fields, the man at third, his responsibility as well. That is the first run that Fields has allowed this year in the majors. There's another 2-2. Two -two. Inside, full count. I don't mind him shooting for the corners with the fastball, but right here, if they go 3 2 change up throw right down the middle and low. He sped him up with the 2 2 fastball. Down the right field line, but fouled again. And that's where the speeding him up and then slowing him down helps you because you're trying to throw a strike there or get it close. And at least he had him out in front because of the change in speeds. Went from 93 down to 83. Altair on deck. Romo loose. 
Here's another 3 2 from Avilan to Saunders. And he got him. The changeup fell off the table. Gave him one all that looked like a strike, and it sure wasn't. Right down the middle with the bottom dropping out of it. Like you're playing billiards right in the corner pocket. An absolutely brilliant seven inning performance from Kenta Maeda. Exactly what he needed to do after the early struggles this season. Coming up next, Access Sportsnet Dodgers. Brought to you by your Southern California Nissan dealers, John Hartung, Jerry Hairston Jr., and Ned Coletti. Break down Kenta's performance. We'll also talk about the red hot Justin Turner. Another two RBI day for him today, as well as perhaps a win in game one of this three game set, guys. All right, Alana, some defensive changes. Daniel Nava is in the game and left, and Aaron Altair will slide from left to right. New pitcher on the mound, Jean Marc Gomez, facing Kike Hernandez, who follows the first pitch in the box, strike one. Tenth or seventh appearance, beg your pardon for Gomez. The 10 I had popping into my head was where the ERA is near. Fastball slider split. Kind of a low leverage situation for him right here to try and get back on track for the Phillies. One and one. Chris Taylor in the on deck circle. One and two. Oh. Gomez to Hernandez with a one two that's outside and the count evens up How about the rest of this series six ten tomorrow. Zach Eflin, who was a Dodger for a short period of time, involved in a couple of different trades. And Brandon McCarthy, who's been so good for the Dodgers this year. Full count. Sunday, it's Ryu for the Dodgers. Phillies haven't yet announced a starter. And then again in the opener Monday against San Francisco, Kershaw Cueto. Colorado beat Arizona three to one. The Giants got back in the winning column, beating San Diego four to three. So they climb out of the cellar now. Flip flop with San Diego down at the bottom of the West. Here's a payoff. Fouled off. 
The Dodgers can hang on to this. They'll be back to 500. They'll have won back to back games for the first time in two weeks and would tomorrow be looking to win three in a row for the first time this year. That feels like a long time coming. These guys want to get out of the every other one mess. Want to get on a roll. And no better time than when you're at home. Swing and a miss, strike three, one gone. MLB.tv Premium is back and better than ever. Watch every out of market regular season game live on over 400 supported devices. And get a free it's subscription to App Bat Premium, Taylor. the number one app for live baseball. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. Dodgers five, Phillies three. Eighth inning with one gone and the base is clear. Chris Taylor to bat. There is no way that Puig knows the camera is on him every time we see him do something funny in the dugout, mm -hmm. which would lead you to believe that he is always doing something funny. Or something. Something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Ball and a strike on Taylor. Does he have a little bit of that guy in the back of the classroom? Got something going on all the time. A little bit, yeah. Mm -hmm. First day off for him tonight. He's the only guy that had started each of the first 21 games, 23 games. A 1 1 pitch. Taylor digs it out foul, 1 and 2. If he wanted to play every day, never have a day off, all he has to do is on the off days go sit next to Dave Roberts. <laughs> Yeah, that'll, him that'll crazy. earn him, right? Steve Sachs in my day would go and sit next to Tommy Lasorda on the days he give him off, and Tommy would say, I'm not resting you ever again. Just get away. That's awesome. So, you're going to have to play me then. Just go sit right next to him. Drive him crazy for the whole game. He'll never rest you. Two and two. Yeah, I mean, Puig might be in the game in the second inning in that case. <laughs> yeah. Look, he'd be hitting him right now, talking to him, pounding him on the head. In between at bats, time his time in the cage in a batting practice, he goes over and he just kind of beats up Turner Ward. Back-to-back -back K's for Gomez to open the eighth inning. It's him earlier tonight. He's capturing John Suhu, who Andrew has made a life out of capturing Dodgers. Award-winning photographer. <laughs> Andrew Tolls at the top of the Dodgers order. There's John. Nobody better. Of course he's got the camera pointed at Puig because he's always doing something. Tolls dribbles one to second, picked up by Hernandez. That'll end the Dodgers eighth. On to the ninth. Altair, Joseph, and Ruff.
Kenley Jansen, five of five in save opportunities this year and actually got the win in yesterday's game, pitching a scoreless bottom of the ninth inning to get it into the tenth where the Dodgers would win it. You know, one of the most amazing stats that I've read about Kenley Jansen is since the 2016 All-Star break, he has struck out 50% of the right-handed hitters he's faced. That's ridiculous. That's number one in the big leagues, of course. Bottom part of the order for the Phillies here. Facing Philadelphia for the 19th time in his career. First one to Aaron Altair in the ninth inning. Strike one. Appeared twice in San Francisco, got a four out save, and then that win yesterday. Quickly 0 and 2. Strikes him out on three pitches. One away in the ninth. Average pitcher in the big league strikes out a right-handed hitter about 20% of the time. Kenley does it over 50% of the time. Native of Curacao. Trying to move to six for six and save opportunities this year. Now Tommy Joseph the seven hitter. Locked in so far tonight four pitches all of them strikes. Again an hour earlier tomorrow night 6 10. Eflin for the Phillies McCarthy for the Dodgers. Here comes an 0 1. Quickly 0 and 2. Couple of these cutters are backing up a little bit unless Kenley's deciding just to go with a straight four seamer because they're expecting the ball to go away from them these right handed hitters but it's actually tailing a little bit inside. His first ball starting to feel like we might be on our way to an immaculate inning the way he was firing them in there. Four Dodgers have done that. Koufax did it three times. Hasn't happened since Todd Worrell did it in 1995. That being striking out the side on nine pitches. A one two. That one's a slider and it's two and two. Phillies struck first tonight with two runs in the third. On a Freddie Galvis double against Kenta Maeda. That is all he allowed. Dodgers getting single runs in the third and the fourth and the fifth. And two in the sixth on his double. The 2 2 pitch. Fouled back. Billy's got one in the eighth against Josh Fields, but that's all. Luis Avilan striking out Michael Saunders to strand a man at third. Now Kenley trying to finish it off. I'm sure that is now part of Kenley's scouting report. The quick pitch. And the scouts to sit right behind home plate and watch the games on the TV. Ones that aren't traveling. Kenley has started to show that once or twice an inning. Another 2 2 pitch. And back to back K's for the first two outs of the night. The Phillies are out away from seeing their six game winning streak come to an end at Dodger Stadium. 
He'll be sending another right-handed hitter up there for this challenge. If you're going to swing at it at shoulder height, you're not going to have very much of a chance against the big fella. Velocity and movement blew by you. Kenley Jansen this year now 15 strikeouts and no walks. Cameron Rupp last hope for the Phillies. Here comes Kenley. Strike one. Dodgers trying to win back to back games for the first time in two weeks since they began the homestand last time around with two wins against Arizona. It would be just the third time this season they've won back to back contests. They've set up a chance tomorrow to win three in a row for the first time this year. Jansen's 0 1. Inside, ball one. Corey Seeger bobblehead giveaway tomorrow night. Oh, we've got a lot of different occasions coming up. Corey Seeger bobblehead in Scully night. The Monday game, Cueto against Kershaw. One and two, took one down the middle. You come out and watch a game at Dodger Stadium this homestead. You might just see these guys starting to hit their stride. Offense looking like it's going to wake up. Kershaw got a chance to be in the middle of a winning streak. And what a night it will be when Mr. Scully's here. May 3rd. Two and two. That's tomorrow's Philly starter, Zach Eflin, 6'10", here in Los Angeles. Crowd of around 47,000 rising here in anticipation of the final out, hoping Kenley can strike out this side for his sixth save. Here he comes. And the Dodgers open the homestand with a 5-3 win. Seven innings from Kenta Maeda. Justin Turner's two run double proves to be the difference in 5 3 in the final. A little bit of a bump in the road at the beginning for Kenta, then he settled right in and went as far as he could and did a great job. The offense came through, especially Justin Turner with extending his hitting streak, and then Kenley Jansen. Punch out, punch out, punch out to knock him out and finish the W. Our Lexus player of the game is Justin Turner. Three more hits tonight. A two run double, which at the time seemed like it was just to make it look a little nicer on the scoreboard, wound up being the difference as the Phillies got a run late. Ripped that one over all Terrace head and left, brought home two, and 5 3 your final score. As the Dodgers get back to back wins and have now won three of their last four. For Oral Hershiser, Lana Rizzo, Nomar Garcia Parra, and the rest of our crew, Joe Davis saying so long from Dodger Stadium. Can't wait for tomorrow night. Game two of this three game series, game two of this six game homestand. Sportsnet Dodgers comes up next.